Hi, 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 Harika, Aditi, and Sherry. So we'll start with the session. Thank you so much for joining and being here before time. We really appreciate you. So uh, as we do before any session, as we would like to do at times, please forget. So uh, let's just take you know one minute and just gather ourselves to be fully present. Usually, we are very dispersed, you know, our thoughts are all over. But for such session, for study circles, it's, I personally, you know, find it a lot more deeper, I mean, the connection. If I'm able to just take a moment and maybe focus on my breath. Aspiring and praying that I see something new, or you know, I can see something that could be helpful for me. Thank you. So, uh Last week, we had basically, we had started a passage. It was uh, really beautiful, I hear that. So it, it's a passage. Uh, it's written by Nolanida. And the title is, the creative soul. So we had started, you know, our uh, journey from the purpose, the aim of human life. And we are exploring that because it's a very big exploration. So this, we found this and this is like really, you know, hits the nail on the head. So we did take up, I think, first two paragraphs, but we just... Uh, read that again so um yeah monica would you like to add anything at this point no no just go ahead yeah okay so if anybody is willing if they can unmute and please uh, read the first para first two paragraphs that would be great we'll take it from there i'll go the creative soul the difference between living organism and dead matter is that while the former is endowed with creative activity, the latter has only passive receptivity. Life adds, synthesizes, new creates, give more than what it receives. Matter only sums up gathers, reflects, gives just what it receives. Life is living, glad, and green through its creative genius. Creation in some form or other must be the core of everything that seeks vitality and growth, vigor, and delight. Not only so, but a thing in order to be real, must possess a creative function. We consider a shadow or an echo unreal, precisely because they do not create, but merely image or repeat. They do not bring out anything new, but simply reflect what is given. The whole of existence is real because it is eternally creative. Okay, should we pause here? Because uh, I don't think we went through it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I don't know why. It's mm. Yeah, thank you, Rick. Rick, any uh, reflections or welcome if you want to say anything before me? Okay. okay. I was thinking that it's such a beautiful observation. I mean, this creation is in front of us every day. Like little ants, we see many a times they have made an ant hill and they have beautiful patterns around. When you see in lawns specifically, little, little ants, they have made beautiful patterns, houses in which they live and other insects and creatures keep on making these formations. So this aspect of creativity is something which is right there in front of us every day. As human beings, we can see them, but we are so lost in our thoughts, but we keep missing. We keep missing on these aspects. So to recognize what Nolinida is recognizing and sharing with us, that this creative aspect is there wherever there is life, life, it's a byproduct of life being there, consciousness being there. I think that's why as human beings, many a times there comes a time in our life where we become very stagnated and mimicking again. Uh, whatever is giving, passively receiving, just consuming and, you know, basically just eating and eliminating and eating and eliminating. And there's hardly any creation happening. And that is the period of a lot of stagnancy and depression in our lives because we are not born for that. We are, we don't feel easy and nice when we are going through such phases because they are not true to our nature. Yeah. I think, you know, the fact that we have to even discuss this, that, you know, what is the difference between living and dead? And are we living? In itself, that's a very, I don't know, I mean, shaking realization, right? That I need to even go there. So, uh, yeah, so uh, but basically, if, you know, if we look at it factually, it's, it's pretty simple. So life, it said, is, has creative activity and dead matter has only receptivity, just passively receives. And, you know, this thing I found quite interesting that, you know, it synthesizes, creates and gives more than what it receives. Usually, you know, how we are kind of, I don't know, powered is like, what do I get? What do I get, right? And yet again and again, we discover that, you know, we did a couple of sessions on self-giving. That the more I give, the more I get, right? Like, it's not that I give because I get, but yet there's something in me which fulfills, which, I don't know, has so much joy when something is given through me, you know, so oh, yeah. And uh, even this part that we consider a shadow or an echo unreal because they do not create, right? So just, I think it's just pointing to the fact that am I just repeating, right? Because that that's what it seems to be. You know, in the other session, one day we were discussing that how the society as such 
it just encourages repetition right we all just want to look alike do the same thing so is it's like as if you know we are all different and have different creativity and yet because we all want to be similar following the same path the same ambitions it feels that we are going against nature in that part right like and that's why it feels most it, you know there's so much stress so much anxiety so much monotony in life and it doesn't need to be i think instead of uh, i feel that it's not that i want to be similar to others but it's just that it feels that if i follow what they are following i will be something and we all want to be something you know so if i get a job like he has if i go to a country like he did you know i will get something so i will be somebody and we all want to be somebody but we don't realize that in mimicking anyone we actually lose our own uniqueness which is by nature given to us you know all of us are so unique so special that uh, we lose that specialness and uniqueness in trying to mimic someone seeing that maybe he has gotten something if he has gotten what appears to be lucrative so and as we question it you know with the light of consciousness that we have when we question it then it's completely like it's an empty bubble and there is no truth anywhere so that's why it's good to question because the moment we poke it's like you know there is nothing in there it's empty so this questioning and interrogating i think it's a faculty given to us for a good use must be put to a good use rather than questioning why others did why they did and you know why they said what they said we can put this questioning to our own benefit so we can go ahead uh, maybe to the next Yeah, if anybody would like to unmute and uh, read from it, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Rick, would you like to continue, please? Mm. Thank you. Yes. So the problem that concerns man, the riddle, that humanity has to solve is how to find out and follow the path of creativity. If we are not to be dead matter, nor mere shadowy illusions, we must be creative. A misconception that has vitiated our outlook in general and has been the most potent cause of a sterilizing atavism in the moral evolution of humanity is that creativity is an aristocratic virtue, that it belongs only to the chosen few. A great poet or a mighty man of action creates indeed, but such a creator does not appear very frequently. A Shakespeare or a Napoleon is a rare phenomenon. They are in reality an exception to the general run of mankind. It is enough if we others can understand and follow them. Mahajano. Mahajano Yena Gata. Let the great souls initiate and create. The common souls have only to repeat and imitate. Rick, would you like to continue? Because it's just one point that is still yeah. being. But this is not as it should be, nor is it the truth of the matter. Every individual soul, however placed it may be, is by nature creative. Every individual being lives to discover 
and to create. The inmost reality of man is not a passive receptacle, a mere responsive medium, but it is a dynamo, a power station generating and throwing out energy that produces and creates. Yeah, I think this much uh, would be enough. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. I think maybe taking a moment, all of us, because this is just going, yeah. So the riddle that humanity has to solve is how to find out and follow the path of creativity. So maybe just taking one little moment, all of us who are here today, to ourselves and just digging within and touching those abilities that have been naturally gifted to us, all of us, you know, without, no matter in what phase of life we may currently be, there would something still be there, which if I touch and revive, it's full of creativity. So just maybe closing eyes at times may help. Touching that, those aspects in me, which are where I am effortlessly creative, which are gifted to me. I am naturally good at them. And many a times we do it in ignorance, so we don't even know that we are having these gifts and abilities. So something which is good in us, all of us, you know, recognizing individually where we can perfect, perfect and even go on the path of perfection and not get tired. It comes very naturally to us. So I think this chosen few uh, that's mentioned here, it on the surface, it appears that it is, it is only a chosen few that can live a life which is fulfilling, creative and, you know, uh, satisfying. But when we look closely in their lives, we will see that they took the courage to uh, actually follow their joy, you know, what was nurturing and fostering for them. They took the courage to follow this natural call and they could not uh, ignore that call and most of us what they are calling common souls i think we are so happy ignoring our calls not we can not say we are happy doing that but because we are you know we don't feel really nice about it at at one times it becomes a monotone and dull routine and we are kind of dragging ourselves and every day is not a beautiful day you know I just have to push myself to work, but I don't even question using the faculty of questioning that I have that what's the point living this life of this sorts. So those few souls that that they say that you know those few souls, it is just that when we look closely in their lives, they had the courage to follow their uh, you know, inner call without any exception. No matter what, I will follow what gives me joy. So I think this following our joy really, uh, for me, it rings the bell, right? That, okay, you know, right track for me, following the joy. Yeah, so please uh, inviting more sharings. Uh, yes, Harika, please. Yeah, hi. Um, so I just had one thought to share. So um, basically, I totally agree with 
lot of courage to uh, you know follow your call and uh, have a sense of direction so i'm just wondering you know where to draw a line between you know mimicking others and finding inspiration like for example if someone is uh, successful or uh, done a good job we normally find insp- uh, find that inspiring and you know we also want to do that thing so like where to draw a line between inspiration and you know mimicking uh i don't know how they would go together but yeah i do hear you but you no know, one thing is somebody's doing something good and it's just you see it and it's beautiful right like say right now yeah. when the examples were given of say napoleon or uh, i don't remember say even say a nana right like somebody who has i don't know traveled where way you have so one thing is that when i see him or when i hear about him something in me believes that because he could do it i can do it as well right my journey would right. be different my path would be different but i too want to have the bliss that i see on his face right the at it, the i don't know peace the care peaceness so that's just but i don't have to it's not that then i'll go and i'll ask my dad that buy a farm in a village so that i can also you know not like let the bird eat the seeds and then sing <laughs> like nana right so yeah yeah it's just that i love what he has done and i would like to do it too and now i find my own path that gives me joy to do that yeah okay i mean we could take again inspiration if there are some steps that we feel appealing like like some people follow a lot of discipline on the way some are really hard working some just sleep for hours so as experimentations i think i would try right if something gels with me so yeah i guess that's in terms of what you asked that what came to me but yeah please uh, more reflection so yeah got it so basically our paths could be different but you know we can probably aim for that particular destination our paths will be different like yeah, not could yeah, be that's different. for sure yeah you know, everybody is unique they have their own likes dislikes talents you know like and working styles nature character personalities and that is the problem that we think that we are all boxes from the same factory or we are made to believe a lot of time and everybody mm. has to go you know 95% and everybody has to yep. kind of follow the same route of you know like marriage and kids and i don't know yeah. whatever depending on the family service business so yeah just yeah thank you yeah so uh, just to add on to what taru had already shared shurabindu and mother very clearly if we delve into their words they say that everybody two words they use again and again swabhava and swadharma and swabhava is our natural permutation and combination of inclinations it's very special it's very unique three people born and brought up in the same house will have three unique swabhavas same parents you know we have, we see it very commonly three people born out of same parents born in similar kind of uh, situations the nurturing and all that they will have three different very unique kinds of swabhavas again depending upon these combinations of tamas rajas sattva you know these three gunas that we have so that will and plus the pressure of the godhead within you know so that would create a very unique swabhava very unique inclination that is what we have to get in touch with because i may take inspiration from others i may even mimic at times that's the ruva sharing that something may be helpful so i experiment you know i mimic that is all allowed on the way but unless i reach my core 
the true unfolding of swadharma what taru was sharing that there are infinite possible ways in which life will unfold and as she said that it will be different so there is it two people twins born in the same house same parents born around the same time two different swabhavas two different unfoldings of life an unfolding of our life is called swadharma unfolding of our inner truth in life so for someone exposure to a social kind of a situation because that person is maybe a born social you know leader or something would be his unfolding of swabhava swadharma you know his unfolding of truth depending on his swabhava for the other maybe more introvertish by nature something in maybe writing poetry or something more introvertish that could be his or her unfolding in life so we cannot compare two people at all that's why when we compare oranges with apple it's like a wrong comparison we should not enter there and that's why most of us who are becoming more and more conscious this don't want to uh, you know consciously enter into comparison of their siblings or you know children it's not a good idea to compare because each person is very unique very different so i think this requires a lot of effort mimicking doesn't require much effort of course that does require research <laughs> because in mimicking also you would do your research so good good for us we will do some effort you know so as divine makes use of everything he'll make use of our effort also that we are putting but the thing is that as mother says uh, you know again and again that before i stumble upon my true purpose in life how to start because right now i don't know what is my true purpose true call in life what is my subhava i have no idea so mother says the way to start is to observe very very closely our likes preferences dislikes okay this is where i want to go this is where i don't really feel like going you know this makes me uneasy or oh, that doesn't make me uneasy so initially in our ignorance this is what mother recommends being very like a scientist observing our tastes and preferences and then once we recognize it whatever work comes on the way because we will be working you know as a human being we'll have some other other kind of work so whatever work is coming to do is with as perfect as possible with a sense of self giving and servitude that okay may i offer myself through this work that's the attitude we should have even for a temporary work i know that this is not my true vocation you know i know that this is a temporary work for me this is not my heart's call but since i have to do it right now let me do it with an act of servitude so what happens that the life unfolds in such a way that slowly with this right attitude flowering in me i am opened up into a new dimension suddenly which is the right work arriving for me right people getting connected to me so again you know we cannot shortcut this process it's a effort taking process i believe you know and if i nurture myself enough that's what we were sharing that if i want to value this human life that i have then i will do all this effort because i care my, for myself you know and for this precious human birth then i would not make every day a monot monotonous struggle just because everyone is doing it yeah so um like uh, because our society is like you know used to compare uh, like everyone even though uh, they know that every person is different has a different path but still uh, like we are used to uh, this comparison uh, by our parents by our friends and everything so what do you recommend on you know tackling uh, such comparisons from you know other people um, so like sometimes that really disturbs you you know uh, like and then um, um you know um get, you can even get um, you know if you feel that you are not good enough or all those things come into your uh, mind so how do you tackle that no i have an example here which i think goes very well <laughs> so just i'm muting myself and sharing that example so imagine that you have to attend to nature's call and the <laughs> okay. timings are fixed 
in your house timings are fixed so they say morning 5 o'clock you can go to the bathroom and <laughs> evening 5 o'clock you can go to the bathroom fixed rule but nature's call is nature's call and in the middle of the day you have to rush to the bathroom would you still say that oh uh, people are not allowing me to go to the bathroom or we just barge in into the bathroom and do what is necessary hmm barjan barjan then you won't bother what your mother and father are saying oh look what a child it is you know we have set the times and she doesn't follow and you know how indisciplined and how rude and you know how in- disobedient you would not bother what they say you would not bother hmm you have to you have to you have to hmm so it is like that that unless you know you can still survive what people are saying and get you know kind of subdued and not follow your heart's call because what they are saying or what they are comparing so then do what they are saying do for as long as you can but i think there comes in everybody's life there comes a time that we can't suppress it anymore hmm okay we can't suppress it and no matter whatever people may be saying they will still be saying you will say okay you know but i know that i have to go just like for nature's call you have to go because that's the right thing to do with so much of pressure in your tummy that's the right thing to do so mm-hmm. if that kind of a pressure has not arrived yet in my life then maybe still continue to listen to what people are saying which i have i'll have no other choice actually i will listen but then there will come a time when 5 am or 4 am boss i don't matter you know i have to go in because i know that that's the right need for me in this moment so to recognize the right need and just to follow it then people don't matter that much and those people late you know after some time uh, those people actually become very resonant and aligned with your going and doing the right thing that happened but we can't see that in beforehand but that happens whenever we follow our heart's call people who were anti us you know, or trying to stop us they become aligned to our call hmm yeah. agree yeah. great example thank you uh <laughs> um uh, once there was an orientation in a school it was mothers i mean a school based on mothers teaching again uh so one of the parents you know they like that particular school was say ranked number second in the city so one of the parents they asked you know they had called the children like say of 10th grade during orientation so that we could ask them questions and one of the parents you know they asked the child that you know compare to the other school which is ranked number 1 how do you compare yourself you know what are the goods the positives because it being mother school it had different ways of doing things right less competitions no gradings so the child for a minute looked surprised you know this is a 10th grade child of a delhi board it's like they are following the same board and all he looked she looked surprised and she said that but why would i compare myself to the other right like my comparison is with myself so every day or whenever i think about it i ask myself am i doing better than what i was doing say yesterday or last week and that's it you know she so the surprise on her face was so beautiful and it was like you know this is the way to go right i like, so yeah i think to also recognize that when we do compare because you know it kind of comes to us this comparison we it comes through the senses and we can't stop ourselves we feel so disturbed we are not very easy about these comparisons going on in the head so i think to be very sensitive to that disturbance that do i want this disturbance in my life we feel very disturbed you know full of these disturbing emotions of wanting to be better than the other and ambition and you know jealousy and all these come up 
and maybe also ill will because if the other person is doing better then you know i want to do better and may you know that so all these things come up and they are very disturbing in nature so also to be sensitive to these disturbances and not to venture out there you know not the right place to be yeah i think on the same lines before this we have to first make sure that we know that stress anxiety they are not part of normal lives you know we are made to believe that that's how it is you know that's how the world works and yet it doesn't i mean it does till it does but once you cross you know once you say that no i don't want it then you will be surprised that how could i live with it for so long because then the basic you know the nature get not the nature like you know the inner being gets so used to harmony or i don't know just it, what words to use that the slightest thing that you know if there's a bother there's a worry you just stop everything you are doing and you want to see that okay what what trouble what the stuff what comment what reaction you know and you want to just offer it or whatever you want but it's you're more aware you're more vigilant so that has to be firstly acknowledged that no it's not okay to be yeah. i think once i was having this discussion uh, with your dad taru and this thing i can't forget which goes in alignment with what you were sharing that he said that not he we were listening to a master and he was sharing that there are two kinds of things that can happen in order to as a reaction to unease or pain and discomfort or suffering that we experience in life or this anxiety and stress that you were sharing so he said that usually the way we live that person said that usually the way we live is that we become so adapted to anxiety and stress and unease in life that we say that okay this is life so we begin to consume pain and in order to consume and get adapted to pain we have to devise all these malls and entertainments because how to distract because there is so much struggle you know it's like a monotone and dull routine so we devise the ways of entertainment we don't question why i am you know adapted to this sad situation but we devise something on the top of that so that i i am easily distracted and i can go shopping and you know get a relief from that kind of a life now he said that once in a million there is person who is very sensitive to this unease in life the pain in life the struggle in life and he becomes a buddha because as you were sharing to be so aware to our inner being that the moment one disturbance comes so you are able to track it to the root of it that where did it arise from what did i do so as to land up in so much of unease so the buddha cannot he cannot just adapt to this way of unease but we were for what we call you know that we are ordinary people ordinary souls we become ordinary because we become adapted to this way of stress and way of anxiety so the moment we become conscious to each and every ripple as mother says become conscious you know what's happening in our being each and every ripple in our being you know why that discomfort you know why that unease and we recognize that we can always you know we can go back and most of the times we can see that again we have landed up into some place in our head where we must not go you know comparing ourselves with someone going to the past and re ruminating regurgitating on experiences going to the future and becoming anxious about something and then you know that brings unease and then we try to distract ourselves rather than knowing that oh i have entered a territory where i need not enter so to be very sensitive to the presence of unease which mother shares also when people are living from the psychic presence from their soul consciousness then you get adapted to this harmony and peace within and the moment a bit of unease happens like a you know some vibration you are able to then look at it and not take it very lightly 
that let it happen and I can live with it. We can then go to the roots and then regain harmony. Even a deeper harmony can be regained. You know, relating, uh, coming back to what we had read, one thing that I would, you know, that I realized in myself, you know, it's like when I basically say that somebody else could do it because that somebody else was somebody, I kind of say that, okay, you know, I don't even need to try, right? Like, okay, you know, a Kabir could see life actually. Or a Jesus became a Jesus because he was Jesus. So then I'm just, you know, drawing that hard, not drawing, actually building a wall or a, I don't know, something even bigger. That it's not even worth that thing because, are, you know, I'm nobody, right? And look at them. So I think that's also ego play, right? So that I don't even have to make an effort to bring it in my life or to strive to be more or less, whatever it is that I'm striving for. And income, you know, and the other way is that again, looking at that person or that some, you know, anything that kind of excites me, makes me more alive, brings joy, that if being in a human form, it's possible for them, it's possible for me. And the same thing I feel can be used, you know, when somebody does really well in something, Either I have a choice of being jealous, right? That, oh, you know, see, he got it and I should have gotten that. Or it's so beautiful that, okay, at least somebody could get it, right? Somebody, that's that space. How beautiful. And it really, you know, shifts the dynamics. Again, just sharing from my own experience. That it just suddenly makes the world more loving and more expanded. That, okay, but... Good, good, you know, somebody, yeah, and you, yeah, yeah, I guess I've made my point. And in, and the other thing in terms of uh, following the calling that we were talking about and relating like this, I remember once, uh, Monica, you had shared this thing with me that you had a cousin and, you know, he was, he loved playing cricket. That's a, you know, Indian game, Rick, I think you would know cricket, yeah. So that's very popular and in India, you know, we do it in each and every, you know, like societies have these lawns and everywhere you would see uh, kids play cricket. So he loved cricket and he was quite good at it. But, you know, his father was like that, you know, this is not something that you would want to waste your time on. So he let him play a little bit, He but that child wanted to kind of, you know, go to the academies and get trained and he was totally denied that this makes no sense. And that really pained him. He had, you know, discussed it with a few other people. And then he slowly fell into what his father was saying. And life went on as normal. He forgotten that he ever loved cricket. And then after, I don't know, fast forward 20, 25 years. So when you met his son, he shared the same thing. That, you know, I love cricket, but my dad would not allow me. You know, it's like we keep repeating these cycles right and harika like you were asking me you know asking us that what to do with the competition when people compare what to do with it i can stop it right like if somebody says that oh why don't you do this i don't want to and i don't even have to say it aloud right it's like say somebody throws a ball at you you have to be there to catch it right what if you don't catch it right you threw it why did you catch it if you didn't want it? I have the choice not to catch it. I have the choice to break the cycle with me. Because the lives that we normally live, they are so blinded by materialism that I don't even see that what am I doing? You know, it, does, it the guy didn't even probably recall that, you know, it's his life being lived all over again and Shocking, right? And yet such examples we see every day.
you know i remember when my uh, so i had a biology background uh, i was into more into biological sciences and i remember that initially uh, because everyone was going outside and having their phd degrees so i also wished that i would <laughs> follow my seniors and go outside and want to know what kind of science do they do outside and outside india i mean so i remember that i really did a lot of uh, struggle go through a lot of struggle application to many universities also spending a lot of hours uh, sleeping less and all that and finally i got through a phd position you know in europe and then started phd now cutting story short when i got the phd degree my father so i realized that the science is not for me after getting the phd degree i realized that science is not for me you know <laughs> maybe too late so people around me you know really kind of taunted that you know you have wasted a few seats and you have wasted so much money because now you are not even entering into research and pharma science which would bring you so much of money and uh, i remember at that time i was so convinced Uh, i was so convinced that this is not for me that even uh, with their taunts having you know all the taunts around people even emotionally blackmailing me that they may have a heart attack if i don't follow you know what <laughs> the job requires me to follow uh, i could not follow what was against the call and i i remember that i had to hear for for years after that when i left science uh, proper research science i had to listen to these taunts again and again in a very indirect manner that you wasted a seat you know you could have earned so much of money but i could not do that so i was incapable just like we were talking of this nature's call i was incapable of being in a place where my soul gets killed so i think we have to become incapable Uh, to have so much care for ourselves and our joy that no matter what people say no matter you know what is right according to them and now i see that uh, you know looking back at those people who were against my following what i followed which was less money you know less reputation according to what they wanted the reputation and all that now those people are very much in alignment because they see that the work that i followed owing to my heart heart call is a right kind of a work it's a proper work it's not harming anyone you know it's not consuming anyone it's helping and it's helping them also so i think there as i was sharing earlier also that then we don't need into this enter into this space of too much looking at what others are saying not saying because once we begin to nurture and care for ourselves and our joy then we we become will become very in not capable of basically throwing ourselves out where we get tortured we will become incapable of doing that and then so the taunts just, yeah taunts also don't matter yes aditi please go ahead no i was just going to say i know like i feel like i'm here just because that's what the goal is um it becomes really hard but i feel like So I do get impacted. Taru knows me. Like I get impacted by people. I've always been a people pleaser, and because that's what like growing up, it was always like, oh, um, you know, you you can't say no, and you know, you I have to be liked by everyone and that kind of stuff, right? So breaking that, so many years of habit, it's so hard. But at the same time, I do want to share. Like lately, like I have been more aware. I'm more okay to say no. comfortable to say no but i do feel that once in a while you fall back into the again the spiral but you just have to stop close your eyes and just bring back yourself in the moment and then stop those thoughts but it is hard <laughs> you know it's it's continuous practice right so i think um and i feel that's why i'm here because listening to you talk and you know taru share her like it really helps so i just wanted to share that it's not something it will happen in a minute or in a day it's a continuous practice that we have to keep on doing 
yeah i think as you said it will not happen in a day or a minute but is it's a continuous practice that we have to do so although it will not happen in a day or a minute but each day <laughs> each day and each minute matters so and if not if i'm yeah. not able to follow it right now you know so i see because i was also i can resonate with your story because i was also most liked child in my family <laughs> in the <laughs> beginning and that creates an impression around that child you know because that child now wants to be most liked you know we begin to stick to that kind of an image and not, not even wantingly so in our innocence we see that okay people are liking me and what would i like to be oh i like to be liked by people so you would suppress what you really like but you would do more things what they like because you want to be liked by them so i have been doing that through my childhood as well and i needed a cancer to know that i don't need to you know do that so not everyone would need a cancer because the universe will make sure that you follow your heart's call in this lifetime or another no matter how hard we may resist and you would see that if you look at people who mostly have you know uh, there have been researches around this subject and people who are suppressing their inner call most of us are but they want to be approved by others there this call comes up and wakes them up that hey dude you know not the right way how long will you continue so for me i had to go through even so the when we are not listening to the subtle cues in the thoughts and feelings then the body wants to knock 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 you know what are you doing so but not everyone has to do that not everyone needs a cancer we can get inspired from other stories you know that uh, you know anita murjani for example she went through a stage 4 you know really like a sore full of sores she had and then even a coma and a near death experience that she had to go through in order to realize that she did not have to become a doormat and people pleaser in order to live a life which is fulfilling so not everyone needs a, a anita murjani stage 4 cancer in order to you know realize that we can follow our heart's call but of course there is a share of experiences that we all need because before that we don't get convinced if i remember you know when taru and me we were friends even before like uh, we started to be friends around 2016 17 whenever kids were, were admitted in the schools you know during that time and i remember that uh, although we were discussing mentally and you know all these discussions we used to have but i realized that a drastic shift in consciousness happened uh, you know for taru only after she had to go through her near death experience so that she could recognize what is given you know what do we need to give importance to and what can be rejected so i think these experiences although we can get inspired by others experiences yet we cannot deny the need of our pain and turmoil that we have to go, go through in order to get truly convinced that yes what i was feeling was right So I think I just want to share like for me what normally works is if in the moment if I start getting carried away and then I was like so I have these self conversations of course the monkey mind right but it's like does it really matter in the bigger scheme of things and then I've like not really and then you know I'm able to then let go but um you know so I think something that I do that helps it's like you know if I were to die tomorrow like would I be like I wouldn't I be sad that I spent half a day thinking about what someone said and then it's like I don't need this right so I think just some technique that I used to let go um you know earlier I used to hold it but then now I just let it pass I I'm aware of of my feelings and then it's like okay I feel what I feel I acknowledge that but I don't have to hold on to it right just let it pass and then being able to move forward so I think that helps just being aware Yeah absolutely that's very helpful
he keeps saying that you know change is tough which it is but we are so clever you know not for our own good but we don't see that the life that i am living is tougher you know otherwise i would not have these questions i would not have these challenges but that i can see i so i say you know okay it's a challenge but you know i know how to get around you know i have done it for so long, long so you know this these ways in which i encourage myself to accept the faults the trivia the petty that i am so much more than that and yet i sell myself short again and again and again because if i were to be honest i would be able to see that no no you know not that i will not go down that lane again come what may you know the other day we were you know attending a session with jet sunmala tenzin pamo she is a buddhist uh, nun and she had spent 12 years in a cave she is amazing like really a beautiful soul the roic heart that's a great this book so uh, you know somebody asked her that you know i really want to get up in the morning but some days i am able to while other days you know just just things just come up you know even if i get up at 5 am things just come up so what to do and she said you know it's like it's about a priority he said that if today i were to tell you that if i do if you don't do your practice starting tomorrow you will die in the, by the evening and it's true in a, i mean and, and you take it to be true right there's no if and but about it will you miss a single day come what me and the answer is no just because i think you know it's not really that bad right like i myself am not yet dejected right you know i'm not yet fed up of my own tendencies i don't see the poison they are creating in me you know years and years and years and years you know like you know talking about us aditi like 40 years at give or take one or two how long right how and i've been recognizing this thing in me for years again right so sometimes we also have to put drastic stops because we love ourselves too much that it's like no more so that is also there but first we have to be convinced that yes like you know the if i know now that you know what i'm holding is poison i will i will not need reasons or techniques or anything to just drop it right i just it will be a reflex so once i know that no no not i would not want to do that again that too is my choice if i can i in courage and in sincerity and honesty if i just look at it so i do have that power is what i just want to share i have that power for sure you know this fed up word that you used i think is very important mother shares that we have to become so disgusted with our old self uh, this feeling and even when we are cleaning houses you know when we keep on to keep our house clean neat and tidy there also we see that we most of us which who are able to keep the houses clean neat and tidy they have a disgust for improper arrangement they can't tolerate improper arrangement in the house and that is what propels them to keep the house neat clean and tidy so i think once we develop this taste for our inner being as well that if things are messed up and entangled and what you said poisonous you just can't tolerate that poison and then you are propelled self motivated to keep the house in in a inner house you know neat clean and tidy so the sense of disgust is uh, i believe very important mother also talks about it yeah. because if there is no sense of disgust then why would i get up and clean the house you know i am okay living there yes jagan please go ahead uh good morning ma'am uh, first of all uh, thank you very much for you know letting me be part of this study circle um my question is i've been listening to the conversations that 
uh, you and you and um, uh, some of the participants are having. And I have a question from my side too, and uh, I, I'll divide it into two points. First one is, you know, uh, when you gave an example about the nature's call, the thing that first came to my mind is the, the desperation one needs to have to sort of ignore what others have to say. So my question, my, my first point of the question is, how does one stay consistently desperate to do the right thing? Uh, or what, what does mother have to say with regards to this? So that you know they can keep on like you know they, they can over you know they can uh, unhear every every opinion you know every tantrum that is thrown in front of them. And uh, second question is actually kind of related to this. And you know we are all humans, so let's say the conscious you know the mind gets diverted from you know being desperate and anxious enough to do the right thing. So is the mind conscious that it is deviating or is it doing it unconsciously and if it does then at what point does it realize that it needs to put itself back in track thank you so i think uh, shiorbindo talks about that being an aryan or being following the truth of your being is a moment to moment phenomenon it's every moment you have to make the right choice. So how you said that how to do, how to maintain that desperate situation each moment of my life would go by that to be conscious of the inner state I am in, to be very, very conscious when unease brims up. You know, because the moment we enter these domains of intruders, as Sri Aurobindo says them, intruders like anger, jealousy, you know, blame, victimization, following desires, you know, all these make us very, very disturbed and restless. And that is why he calls them intruders. So whenever these intruders arise in the being, comparison with others, jealousy, ambition, greed, you know, these are all intruders. They are not true to our nature because they disturb the sanctity of the being. So how to maintain that desperate situation is that to have a guard always on the territory like fence, you know, like this is my being and here is a fence. You know, if, if you, those of us who live in apartments who have guards, you know, in India, we have guards around apartments. So that guard each moment has to be very vigilant. Because any time a stranger can enter without his, so if he's slackening, you know, he says, okay, let me have tea. Oh my God, like 10 hours of work, you know. And the moment he turns it, it's back, a stranger enters in the territory. Now he can be a hooligan or he can do whatever he wants inside. That's what happens with us. The moment we slacken the vigilance, the strangers are here. They're always around, always they are lurking around the corner so without being vigilant we cannot maintain this sanctity although having said that we would know that there will be times when we will not be vigilant and then what will happen we will begin to experience a lot of discomfort and ease unease you know, that because the stranger has entered now the jealousy is here desire is here blame game is here comparison is here all that you know any any point it can enter now how to recognize it it's a beep beep red signal you are feeling uneasy in the being you're not your easy self you're not your simple hearted self so it's very simple to recognize if we are conscious it's like a red light or a green light there are orange lights also in between Orange lights can be recognized if we are more conscious that the moment you are thinking, like entering the thinking domain, you know, and entering into a territory which is not your place to be, you get the orange signal. Your thoughts become crowded. You don't have any more simplicity in the mind. So to recognize and to be very, very sensitive to that red and orange signal. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. 
yes uh, that was a really beautiful explanation thank you for that namaskar thank you thanks for your question but when you see them entering what to do when you see them entering what to do yeah oh, oh, if you think that they are giving you a promise then maybe you would follow <laughs> you you can't help it and then you will suffer and then come back to the simple self it happens with all of us but at times when you have had enough you know for example if i have been uh, following a pattern of desire again and again and if i have had enough of suffering then when the next time the desire begins to enter then uh, there would be a conviction arising from the being no more and uh, i won't be able to follow the dictate now the ripple yeah. may still ripple the impression may still be there like here is the desire in front of me it's standing the ripple is here right but i can't go that path it's not possible for me anymore because i have suffered enough and at times we will slacken down and we will follow then following our unease we will come back to our simple self there is i mean what to do we have to go through all these experiences what can we do yeah. that's nice thank you uh, so going through it is also part of growth right so it is yeah sure bindu in savitri he talks about that through the prakriti's dominant hand through all these experiences of life in my ignorance the psychic being is growing in stature so this is we we are in a safe situation we that's why in prayers and meditations mother shares that divine victory is certain whether in ignorance or in consciousness the psychic being is growing the soul consciousness now people who are reflecting over these you know things which we rarely get to chance to reflect upon what is this if not the psychic being wanting to have a stature in a, you know our being that i want clarity i want truth so we are in very safe hands we can relax <laughs> even if we slacken down the vigilance even if we follow a wrong path that also adds on and assimilates to our experiences any other uh, comment question i have a comment monica yeah. you're the first person whom i've heard acknowledge what i actually did too i was in yeah. quit banking i quit banking in big big global bank banks because it would require my soul and i came to a frightening realization that yes i could continue to go up and seek power and wealth and i turned back and i quit and i'm delighted to hear that you had a different but very similar recognition and i I don't know other people that have done that. Yeah, glad to hear that. And I'm sure there are many many more such people. <laughs> I'm damn sure about that. Yeah. But thanks for sharing. Yes. Very inspirational. we can end here or i also had that you know small uh, not small but a page long passage from sunlit path to end i mean it not to end but it does feel very appropriate here we can just read it once and then we can we discuss it next time if need be so uh, anybody who is going to begin a new So the topic is the materialism. So this mundane affair, the materialism of modern time.
Mm-hmm. Rick, would you be willing? Otherwise, I can. Read. Certainly. Mm-hmm. I love to read. I think you probably know. The materialism of modern times. At that time, the time of the Buddha, to live a spiritual life was a joy, a beatitude, the happiest state, which freed you from all the troubles of the world, all the sufferings, all the cares, making you happy, satisfied, contented. It is the materialism of modern times that has turned spiritual effort into a hard struggle and a sacrifice, a painful renunciation of all the so-called joys of life. This insistence on the exclusive reality of the physical world, of physical pleasures, physical joys, physical possessions, is the result of the whole materialistic tendency of human civilization. It was unthinkable in ancient times. On the contrary, withdrawal, concentration, liberation from all material cares, consecration to the spiritual joy that was happiness indeed. From this point of view, it is quite evident that humanity is far from having progressed. And those who were born into the world in the centers of materialistic civilization have in their subconscient this horrible notion that only material realities are real. And that to be concerned with things that are not material represents a wonderful spirit of sacrifice, an almost sublime effort. Not to be preoccupied from dawn to dusk and from dusk to dawn with all the little physical satisfactions physical pleasures, physical sensations, physical preoccupations is to bear evidence of a remarkable spirit. Thank you. I share this on the group in case we would want to read it again. So yes, thank you. Okay. Yes, please. Yes, Rick, please. Uh, Rick, were you saying something? I was just affirming, yes, I'd like to ha- okay. have this to read later. Okay. Aditi, were you saying the same thing? Yes, me too. Okay. Because I love to buy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just share the passage. I won't share anything else in that case. Yeah. yeah. So that was from the sunlit path. We have a PDF of it. I'll be happy to share it on the group in case you would want to read it too. It's a beautiful book. So uh, we'll just take you know one minute, like when we started, and now that we are ending. So uh, you know, just to share the joy of having such a space where we can, you know, discuss, reflect on the works of these beautiful souls, these masters, these mystics. So just taking a minute to thank as well as share this joy, this merit to their beauty. Thank you. 